Did you ever think you could win $1 million fishing? Well, that's exactly what the top prize money was back in 2007 when the FLW Forest Wood Cup was held here at Lake Washita. In 2011, the tourney is back with more than 100 of the world's top anglers in competition. And in case you didn't know, in the world of spectator sports, fishing is fast gaining in the ranks of NASCAR. And that, my friends, is no joke. Just right outside of Hot Springs is Lake Washita. It sits in the Washita Mountains. It's known as one of the top three lakes in the nation for its beautiful, deep, clear water. And as far as I'm concerned, it's number one in beauty. It's the most beautiful lake that you'll ever be on. There's no houses or anything around it. It's all surrounded by national forest. And around the marinas, you have uh, rental barges that you can go and enjoy the views and the scenery out on the lake. You've got jet skis, you've got houseboat rentals. There's all kinds of things to do. When you're sitting back and you're looking at those mountains and you get to just seeing everything from that water view, it's, it's like I say, it's always been ranked as one of the most beautiful lakes in the entire nation. So it's, it's a gorgeous lake. In 2007, Bryant native Scott Suggs became the first angler ever to take the $1 million prize money in bass fishing after being on the tour for only two years. You know, I've fished Lake Washita my entire life. I got to fish with my grandfather when he was alive. I got to fish with uncles. I got to fish with my dad, mainly my dad. He always had me on the lake. And I had some great memories on Lake Washita with family and everything else. But some of the most memorable times was in 2007 when I won the Forest Wood Cup. Not only was I able to win it on my most favorite lake, but I was able to win it in front of my mom, my dad, my family, and friends over there. And to be able to have that and be able to share it with that many people. We had over 14,000 at the way in the last day and people that I fished against in tournaments over there my entire life there cheering and backing for me and everything, I'll never be able to top it. It was an experience of a lifetime. Named after the founder of Ranger Boats, Forrest L. Wood, FLW Outdoors began in 1996. It is now seen in more than 500 million households worldwide. Yeah, our, our sport's growing leaps and bounds, you know, and it started started 15 years ago, really, with with Erwin Jacobs as far as the FLW side, and it has really exploded since then. You know, since Walmart came on board and brought a lot of expo our sponsors with us. Man, it's just, it's just grown in leaps and bounds. And I think it's gonna continue to grow. You know, you can see where we're at today, where we were 15 years ago. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like 15 years from now. And so, you know, we came through the, the recession just like everybody else did last year. And I really feel like we, we've weathered the storm. We came through it. You know, Walmart's back, Kellogg's is back. I'm so thankful to be fishing for Kellogg's and represent the company like, like the, you know, that produces the products that they produce. And I'm just really excited about the future of bass fishing. You know, you got kids out there now that are in high school and, and, and college and, and really want to do this. And I think there's a big future yes, out there for everyone. Yes. 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 yes, yes, woo -hoo! That's a better fit. Greg Bohannon of Rogers has been on the FLW tour since 2007. It's a pretty good way to make a living, you know. It, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of long hours. You know, we practice the daylight to dark. We have three official practice days and then we, you know, once the tournament begins, it's a four-day event. So, you know, it's a lot of hard work, but that's, that's the work we've chosen. And, uh, but it is a lot of fun. It's a fun way to make a living. Golly, there's a good one. Not too shabby there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good some guys right now looking for that fish right now <laughs> out there on the water. That's what a lot of the guys are doing in the tournament right now. It's, you know, they're really focused on brim beds. Brim are spawning this time of year. And these big guys want to come out, come up, and they want to have lunch on the brim. <laughs> and what I understand, talking to people yesterday, that, you know, late in the day is when the better, it's when the better fish for biting. That is a money fish there. That's a, that's a good one. 
That's probably a four and a half. What are the odds of catching one like that in the in midday on a hot well, day like this? This time of year, this lake's a little bit unique. It has such a big brim population. Um, the the brim beds up in the day really get uh, the bass really get up there on the bank shallow and during the day, and, and it's really a it's really a great pattern uh, on a lake that has a big brim population. So you wouldn't think you could throw a topwater in the middle of the day, but uh, this lake's a little bit unique. It's got a great brim population and. Up during the day, that's when that's when it gets even better. That's a really nice fish. And so you throw something, you know, it's a small brim imitation top water, and um, work it, you know, kind of sporadically down the bank. And I think the bass think it's a, you know, wounded brim that's coming off one of those beds, and and uh, they just come up for a free meal. This is a great lake. Yeah, you know, Lake Washita. You know, in the state of Arkansas, I think it's one of our better lakes. It's got a good population of fish. Plus, it's got, you know, it's got the big fish. They catch some 10-pounders here sometimes. And so, um, it's a really, really good lake. It's a nice fish. Probably probably close to four, three and three quarters, close to four pounds. You know, that's the difference between a pro and an amateur like me. I fished 20 years, and I have yet still to catch <laughs> one like that. <laughs> well, there's a log out there you want to throw at it? We should be able to catch another one right here. I would think going down that bank, we'll, we'll make a few casts back here, but that, that windy bank down there looks pretty good. A lot of times in fishing, you know, we, we, we caught that big fish right back there where the water was. It's the last little bit of deep water before we get to the flat. Now, if I was practicing today, you know, if I didn't get any bites past that, this flat part right here, then that's how you kind of, kind of how you start developing patterns when you, so if you went down the other bank over there and you got a bite before you got to the very flat part, and then you kind of start running around and, and trying to put pieces of the puzzle together. That's what I've always told people. People ask, how do you, how do you dissect water, or how do you go to these different lakes? And, 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 and I always describe it as putting the puzzle together. Whoever can put the puzzle together the fastest wins the game. And it's just little pieces all throughout practice that you have to put together. Sometimes things develop during the tournament. Yes! Yeah! Woo! There is some amount of luck involved, especially in catching big fish. But it, you know, consistent consistency over time is not luck. Consistency um, is where the skill comes in. You'll see some guys that are consistently in the money, consistently making top tens. That's where that's where the skill comes in. Now, one guy can go out and have a have a big day and catch a couple of big fish. But when you, you do it over and over and over and over, uh, that's not luck. That's skill. And I think some guys just have you know a good uh, more God-given ability than some of us. You know, some guys have, some guys just have a lot of, a lot of natural talent, and, and you know, and I think I have some of that. But then, then um, I think some of it can be learned. You know, the more time you spend on the water, there's, there's no substitution for time on the water. That, that's just how you learn stuff. And, and uh, some of us that don't have as much God-given ability as the other ones, we just have to work that much harder and try to learn as much as we can. Uh, you know, I, I grew up on a farm. I grew up on a, a farm, and, you know, we, we were a farming family, and we had chickens and cattle, and, you know, and one thing my dad started us off doing, we started working at a young age, and so, you know, as soon as we got our chores done, man, all I wanted to do is go fishing, and, and really my mom is the one that got me started fishing. She bought me my first rod and reel, and, you know, I grew up fishing all the creeks and ponds around, around northwest Arkansas. There's not a creek around northwest Arkansas that I haven't been on. And, you know, we're really blessed in Northwest Arkansas, and even in the state of Arkansas, we have a wealth of outdoor activities we can do, and we have a wealth of, of water around Arkansas, and a lot of fishable water, you know. You don't have to have a big bass boat to be able to go bass fishing. I, I grew up learning to bass fish on, on streams and ponds, and, and you can take a lot of what you learn as a kid and apply it nowadays, and I apply it nowadays to, uh, to when I'm fishing big time tournaments. You know, I always say there's probably three things in my life uh, it revolved around when I when I was growing up. It was hard work, sports, and the outdoors, and, and uh, you know, and that that uh, still kind of rings true nowadays. But but sports were a big part of, uh, of learning the con competitive nature of this sport. You know, I grew up playing football and baseball, and ended up playing uh, football and baseball at Arkansas Tech, and uh, you know, ended up getting my my degree paid for through sports. And so, sports is a big uh, got a big big part in my heart. I just I just think you can learn a lot from from sports and apply it to your job and apply it to the outdoors. 
Um, but I went to Arkansas Tech, got an ag business degree, uh, started two days after I graduated college and uh, started for uh, Tyson Foods and worked for Tyson Foods for 13 years, worked my way up to a plant manager the last six years I was there. Um, I ran uh, the Cornish plant for Tyson Foods and uh, left that job and, and uh, started uh, pursuing this career. And I'd kind of reached a point in my career to where I was fishing competitively and, and working my way up the ranks of FLW and starting the BFLs. And you know, I had to kind of make a decision whether I was going to try to pursue a full-time career or, or uh, pursue a full-time career with Tyson. And fortunately, uh, my wife pushed me to do this and, and uh, she went back to school and, and, and got a really good uh, uh, master's degree and, and kind of afforded us the through some discipline investing and through her we, we got to I got to try this sport and she's she's my she was my biggest sponsor all along and my biggest supporter my biggest fan so I couldn't have done it without her but. just goes to show you behind every good man there's a good woman Just as steamboats did years and years ago, back during the 1800s going up and down the Arkansas River, you too can have your own paddle wheel adventure aboard the Arkansas Queen from North Little Rock. About the only thing missing, or should I say, the only one missing, would be Mark Twain. I've had several friends tell me what a nice tour it is in all seasons, but the weather today was just so beautiful we couldn't pass it up. I have in-laws in from Scotland, and so this was the easiest way to show them the sights along the river in Little Rock. Even folks from overseas are quite impressed with this riverboat cruise on the Arkansas River, such as Ian Cornish from Plymouth, England. Well, I'm staying for two weeks with my uncle and aunt. So I came over, over about 10 days ago, and I'm quite impressed by Arkansas. I'm surprised that it's such a green area. The countryside is beautiful, and my aunt has given me a good tour over the, over the, the counties, counties here. I brought, I brought uh, greetings from the, the Lord Mayor of Plymouth to, to, the, to the Mayor of um, Little Rock, to, um, from the citizens of Plymouth to the citizens of America to say thank you for what you've done in uh, your past history, looking after us uh, in the Second World War. What are your thoughts of this uh, boat ride here, this river boat? Well, this is in this is this is typically American. A, a, a ride up the river with a, a stern wheeler is very, very American. And when I take the photographs back to my folks in the UK, they'll be really uh, impressed with it. That's right. <laughs> I've enjoyed every moment of my stay here in, in Arkansas. And I find American people are very friendly and very welcoming and very easygoing. You know, see, in Britain, I think we're possibly a little more standoffish. We're not quite so easygoing. You know? <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, this is my first time I've lived here a good 40 years, and I've seen this boat up and down the river a number of times. I'm an old Navy man, and uh, it, it was interesting to see this barge moving up. It reminded me when I was in my first convoy to go, going to Europe. And I looked up as, a, as the, uh, the barge was moving along, I said it could be, it's going about 12 knots, 12 knots or slower, because that was, as, that was the fastest we could go in the convoy. But it reminded me of that. It sure reminded me of that. The ship is very unique. Your barge is very, very unique. I enjoy the uh, thing here, I, well organized. Uh, it, uh, the, the people I could see were all friendly and uh, your crew was nice. I asked the young lady, where was the head, where's the head at? And she says, what did you mean by head? I said, young lady, 
The head means in the Navy, a toilet. Where's the toilet? She says, over there towards the, the front. She said, I says, towards the bow? She says, yes. It's a different experience for people. It's something that's unique. Uh, not anything else around here like it. There are many people that live locally that have never actually been on the Arkansas River, which is amazing. We get a lot of out-of-town guests, and we get quite a few local guests that are just, have lived here forever, and they're like in awe. Especially when they're getting off the boat, they're like, I never knew, you know? Um, and as cruise director, um, directors of customer service, it, it's my job to make sure that everybody has a good time. And I, I always tell them in my announcement, you don't get off the boat unless you've had a good time. So unless you want to mop after the cruise, you're going to have a good time. It's all about safety first on the boat. It's all about safety, um, as the captain has probably told you. Uh, but it's, it's about fun and having a good time. We provide them uh, with great customer service as far as service with our food that we offer. Uh, we try to offer the best quality of food possible. People, it's amazing, people that come on, I don't know what type of food they're expecting or what quality of food, but we get nothing but compliments over the food that we've served. They're, they're like, I didn't expect this. I don't know what they were expecting, but um, yeah, we get compliments all the time and as far as wait staff, and it's all about the customer having a good time, pretty much so. And you know, our entertainment, you know, we get, we get some wild people on here that want to do all these crazy dances and then we get the, you know, we have our age group of our customers that come on this boat and guests that are on this boat range anywhere from early 20s up to 80s and 90s. Last week I had a group from out of state and they were all in their 80s, which is great. And they were out dancing and so it, it's, it's really self-gratifying to know that people get off this boat and tell me what a good time they've had. And you also have uh, specialty cruises, like around the holidays and... Uh, we cruise uh, every holiday. And, and autumn cruises? We have the fall color cruises. Um, we actually go through the lock and dam on those cruises. You know, um, there has only been one time that we were not able to go through because there were quite a few barges coming down, but we bill it as a fall color cruise so that everybody can see the leaves changing. When you head up the river towards Murray Lock and Dam, you have all of the hills there, you know, overlooking like River Ridge that overlooks the river and Walton Heights and we go way up on the other side, up into the Maumelle area, turn around, it's a four hour cruise. Uh, we do those on Saturday and Sundays uh, for three weekends in a row. So we, we get quite a few guests and we get a, quite a few repeat guests. And if you've never had a chance to ex experience going through a lock and dam, you know, a lot of people are in small fishing boats that may do that, but if you've never had the opportunity to either do that or be on a big boat, it's very interesting how that works. Once you lock in and the water goes up or goes down and people are just in awe, They're, you know, especially the people that are seated on the main deck when, you know, when the water starts going down and all of a sudden it starts getting dark and all they can see are the, you know, the uh, lock walls. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting experience. You know, our holiday cruises, we cruise for Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve. We have our New Year's Eve parties. We usually do two cruises for the young, the older folks that don't want to be out too late. We have a very nice prime rib dinner on that cruise. And for the late night group, we pretty much do the wild party thing. We usually have a DJ with hors d'oeuvres and it's all about having fun. We do a lot of music cruises, late night music cruises. We have reggae, we have uh, jazz, uh, we have various players that come on, Rodney Block, Michael Eubanks has been on the boat playing jazz. And so we have a lot of fun cruises also. For the kids, we do our ho-ho, what we call our ho-ho Santa cruises, Santa's on board. Actually, Santa kind of cruises onto board. Captain lets us know when Santa's in the area, he lands on board and comes down. All the kids get to a visit with Santa, sit on Santa's lap, and some of them have lists. Some have come back every year. You know, this is our sixth season in Arkansas. A lot of people confuse us with the boat that used to be here, that left in 99, because we used to be the Tunica Queen. And we're here in Arkansas, and we have been here now for our sixth season. So, and we're a little bit more elegant with our two indoor climate controlled dining facilities and then our third deck open air. We can accommodate over 300 people on the boat. So it's, it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do. And that it is. Take a cruise for yourself aboard the Arkansas Queen.
This may look like I'm in the middle of nowhere, but actually I'm just minutes away from I-430 in West Little Rock. I'm on one of the brand new canoe and kayak trails at Two Rivers Park. The opportunities here are aplenty. Two Rivers Park actually began with community garden plots back in the late 70s. It's now become one of the most highly acclaimed urban park facilities in the country. It's natural beauty. You don't find this in the center of a uh, urbanizing area. And as the consultants looked at it, they gave us that option and we agreed that it would be a natural park. Well, 98, I built the, the road, it's uh, County Farm Road Extended. It's actually Two Rivers Park Road that gives you access to the interior. And off of that, the city of Little Rock bought, built a trail that went down to the what is the easternmost point. Uh, then we kept looking, kept thinking, bringing people together. And out of that theme of a natural park, uh, we decided we could add some trails so it would be accessible for people to walk or ride their bikes. And the city's trail is about a mile and a half, three mile round trip. We added another four miles of paved trail, another probably three or four miles of uh, rock, compacted rock trail to really open it up. We didn't push it a lot because one thing, we didn't have the facilities. And this western entrance uh, took people a long way to get there. But then we had the plan for the bridge, Two Rivers Park Bridge. And when it opened, people were streaming over here. And now they've discovered it, uh, they want to see more and more of it. I started coming out here with Charlie when he was a little bitty guy. He at home can be very aggressive and I come out here so he can just get some fresh air and run around. And he's been coming out here probably since he was about, I wanna say 11 months since he could walk. We just come out here and play and he loves it. It's good before nap time, it's good before dinner, it's good for any time actually. Well now you need to get a bike and join him. I do, I do. I can't keep, keep up with him. He's getting faster and faster. I will get a bike actually, very soon. Well, we've been coming since um, it first opened. My husband brings my boys out here and they go bike riding and I come out in the mornings and go walking with some friends and anytime we get a free chance, we come out here, we just love it. It's kind of uh, like being out in the country here, except you're still in the city. I know, it is. It's something great that Little Rock has. I'm so glad, I feel so safe out here and we just love it out here. It has a lot to offer. What do you think of something like this uh, versus, I guess, trying to ride a bike on the street with cars? <laughs> I'd be afraid to ride on the street with cars. We started about four weeks ago, so we're fairly relatively new to, to riding. Mm -hmm. and we really enjoy it. It's nice, relaxing. Where did uh, y'all go before uh, all this was built out here and developed? Where did... We didn't do too much. <laughs> didn't do too much. <laughs> On and off, we went to uh, to a gym, but mostly off. But uh, uh, we both uh, have taught school, and after we'd get home, we we wouldn't want to get out, you know. So. But now this o opens up a whole new opportunity, I guess, for y'all. Uh, well, I retired this year. Uh, Charlotte's still working, but uh, it uh, we we really enjoyed it. It's really nice to be able to have a place like this to ride. So check out all the available opportunities here at Two Rivers Park in West Little Rock. And for more info on this destination, plus many of our others, or to order a copy of an episode, visit our website, aetn.org slash exploringarkansas. And we'll see you again the next time for another exciting adventure on Exploring Arkansas.